Um, so, as I was saying before, this is my my character in these two animations. So I've just switched him over into dance pose, and uh, I'll play it really here, really quick, so you can see what he's doing. Uh, he's just doing a little jig here. Uh, he's the he's a pretty funky fresh penguin. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so the idea is that we're gonna, we want to bring this guy into Unreal. So I first probably should open a project. So my apologies. I keep getting carried away. Um, I'm just gonna create a default project. It's opening on another screen, so. In the meantime, I'm going to switch this into object mode. Okay, he's in object mode. Good. Hey! Alright. It's at 96%. Load faster! Hey. Wait, wait. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen again. Okay. Um, Alright, so I have my project up here. Can I... Mm, probably should not. Hang on. Maybe? Okay. Boop. Minimize. And it's down here. Don't let me forget that it's down here. Um. Alright, so... First, we want to export the skeletal mesh, which is basically the combination of this mesh and this armature. So... I'm going to switch it back to T-Pose really quick because we want kind of a neutral pose as a reference pose because that's going to be the pose that uh, Unreal uses for all of its animations as like a starting neutral pose. So I'm going to select both of those. I'm going to go up to File, Export, FBX, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on here and select armature and mesh by holding down shift. I'm going to select selected objects. Sometimes when you're uh, working with multiple animations and multiple characters, you have more than one in a project. So if you don't have selected objects checked, it'll try and export all of them. And you don't want that. You just want the one that you have selected. So, and then just for, this is our smoothing groups. Um, I usually set that to face just so. It's a, it usually gives me pretty good results. Um, I'm going to leave add leaf bones checked, and I'm going to turn off these two. Now, the reason I did that is because um, if you have multiple... So if I were to export this animation, this uh, skeletal mesh with those two turned on, it'll also try and export both of the actions that I had listed, that dance animation and the T-pose, which I don't want. I want to in export each of those individually so that I can keep track of them and make sure that the program doesn't try to give them a default name that's kooky and really long and has a lot of numbers. So I'm going to leave those unchecked. And I do have a slide in my presentation that has these settings, so if you guys ever want to reference that, it will be available to you. Um, so I'm just going to find my desktop here, and I'm going to export him there. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm just going to go ahead and import it straight into the project. Um, so I'm going to go up to my desktop. I'm going to go find this Dancing Penguin, SKM, which is uh, short for Skeletal Mesh. And uh, import settings, those are also important. Um, let's see, the one I'm looking for is not animation. It is use T0A reference pose. So you know that uh, T pose that we had him in. In some cases, when you're using animations, some animators like to include a one frame of just a T-pose, and then the character will start to animate. So this basically just takes that first frame, that T-pose, and it uses that as its reference pose. So we're going to turn that on, and then we don't have any morph targets yet. That'll come in later. And I 
think that should be good. I'm not going to import materials or textures because we don't need those just yet. Also, Blender doesn't really do that very gracefully either. So, and for, for my own sanity, I'm going to change this from uh, compute normals to import normals and tangents. I find it gives me more accurate results. Um, and then I'm going to hit import. And then we should get three components. <coughs> Takes a second. Cool. So we have these three components. We have our skeleton over here and our skeletal mesh over here. Now, this is just our skeleton right now. We don't have any animations on it yet. I'm going to pull this up here, and that's going to be my second tab. And uh, we just have a plain old character here. Cool. So now we're going to import his animation. To do that, we're going to come over here, and we're going to switch it over to the dance animation that we had before. Uh, I'm going to switch that back to the first frame for no particular reason, just because. And uh, I'm just going to label this as penguin dance underscore anim. And oh, I went in the wrong screen again. So we're going to come back into the main portion, and we just want the armature this time because that is what contains all the animation information. Uh, so we don't need the mesh for this one. And then the, all of these should still be the same as the skeletal mesh. We just want the armature this time. So we're going to export that, and then we're going to come over to here, and then we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to import this guy. And this time we have a different import setting interface. So this time instead of the skeleton and the mesh, we just have skeleton. So for the skeletal mesh, we didn't have to select what skeleton it was referencing because we wanted Unreal to make that skeleton for us from our skeletal mesh. So now that we're importing an animation, we have to tell that animation what skeleton to use if that makes any sense. Hopefully it will once we get more characters in here. But for right now, we're going to select this one because this is the one with the star on it, which means it's new, it hasn't been saved yet. We know this is the one that we want. And then we're going to import that. And lo and behold, there's our animation. Now, some cool things about, uh, well, I mean, Cool is kind of a relative term. Um, I found them quite annoying when I first uh, discovered them, but uh, there's some new features in Persona. Uh, one of them is that you can open all of these in different tabs. It used to be that uh, if you switch between these three up here, these three, hey. The third one three. Okay, well that's cool. I guess it's because it hasn't updated yet. Yeah. Okay, so well, this one has all three, right? So if we click on this, it should open up another tab with just the skeletal mesh in it, no animation whatsoever. Um, it used to switch between all of those modes in one tab. Now you can have multiple tabs where you can compare different animations playing. So that'll also come in handy later for when I need to show you guys how to retarget. Um, so just for funsies, let's see this play, yay! Alright, cool. So now, what's the next part? We got our animation in Unreal and we have our skeletal mesh in there. What's next? Um, morph target animation, okay. So for that one, oops, okay. I have another file that I'm going to open up, and he is called Cave Dweller. Now, this is also a character that uh, Wes made, but uh, I did this rig. This is my rig. He did help with the FK rig, though, so he went through and he set up all of these bones, 
And then I came in and I set up all of these controls, um, including this face uh, panel over here. So um, what I mentioned earlier, or at least in the uh, description of the presentation, is that uh, I'd be going over two different methods of morph target animation, right? Um, so you have one where you uh, just bring in the morph targets and then you use the anim curve function inside of Persona to animate those morph targets. And then you have the bone driver method, which is what essentially this is. These are actually bones in disguise. Um, if I go into pose mode or edit mode, I believe, and uh, these are basically all these are is just a bunch of bones that I've uh, parented to curves that are words um, just to make it nicer and easier to read. Um, so let's see, I guess for starters we'll go ahead and we will just export this guy, right? First I need to make his mesh selectable. Sometimes when I'm rigging, I make the, the mesh not selectable because I select it by accident a lot and it gets annoying after, you know, the fourth or fifth time you've done it. <laughs> so, uh, so we're just going to do the same thing here that we did with our previous character, right? We're going to export the armature and the mesh. We're going to only use select ob selected objects. We're going to switch that over to face, and then he doesn't have any animations, so, I mean, it shouldn't matter, but just for, to be safe. And then I'll just go ahead and export that to the desktop also. And then we'll come back into Unreal. And then this time, when we bring in the character, we're going to tell it to bring in our morph targets as well. And it should remember all of our or settings from before, but it doesn't, so... Mm, okay. So no animations, no nothing, just import. Alright, cool. So now, you have this panel over here. So he's got a little blank animation. And he's got, like, uh, some emotions. He's, he's angry and sad and uh, confused all at the same time. Um, so that's how that works now. Hmm. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So I guess in order to show you the uh, anim the morph target animation using the anim curves, I actually have to have an animation, which makes sense. Um, so let me just uh, make something really quick. And maybe I'll animate him talking. Um, so maybe I'll have his mouth move a little bit. Um, so I'll go ahead and no. Oh yeah, okay. I wanted rotation, right? By the way, I'm, I'm when I'm animating, I'm um, marking the keyframe by hitting I on my keyboard. Actually, maybe I can turn on uh, the, the yeah the screencast keys. I think I probably neglected to um, <coughs> turn those on. That's uh, an add-on, right? Yeah, you might have to turn it on preferences. All right. Uh, screencast. Mmm, I don't see him. Well, that's cool. Um, alright, well, I'll just tell you what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, I'm just gonna go forward a few frames, and I'll rotate that out a little bit. And then I'll animate the rotation of that jaw. And uh, I'll also come down here. Oh, cool. It's already in local mode. So I'll just grab these three bones then. And I'll rotate his head up a little bit. And then I'll key those in place. Oops. Okay. Actually, I do want that there. And then 
I'll go back and key that there as well so it stays put. This is what I do at work every day. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, so what I did here was I just uh, clicked on this clipboard icon here to copy this pose so that I can paste it using this icon here and then key it. And uh, I guess 29 frames should be enough, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll set the end frames to be there, and then we can kind of see it. He he talks very slowly. Wait, hang on. Hey, why didn't you work? Okay. All right, let's try this again. Paste, 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 paste. Oh, that's why. I had the wrong bone selected. It only copies the pose of the bones you have selected. So that was my fault. Yay, live demos! <laughs> Alright, cool. Maybe now it'll go. Okay, cool. Alright. So I have my lovely talking animation here. <laughs> um, so. I'll go ahead and export that. This time I just want the armature, so I'm going to make it a point to only select the armature. And then I'm just going to export it like I did the other animation. So you guys are going to see this a lot. It's kind of repetitive. Maybe you'll learn something. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to name this talk, and then I'm going to export that. I'm going back to Unreal. If I can find it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Excuse me. <clears throat> and we're going to point it toward the cave dweller skeleton and we're going to import it and voila we have a talking on music la 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 <laughs> <laughs> um so now we should we have this curves thing down here, right? I'm gonna hit Control S really quick because it's a reflex and I can't control my urges. I'm sorry. Um, and well, then I'm going to. So that's cool. So I learned a thing just now. Um, it used to be you had to um, type this in manually and you had to make sure that it matched the the name of the the blend shape exactly, but in this case it's got it all here for you. Cool, so I'm just gonna make him blink because that's easy, right? Um, and then we should be able to convert to a variable curve. Cool, okay. And let's see, can I expand the window? Yes, cool. Alright, so this is the animation in its entirety. So you can see I'm scrubbing through, and uh, let me see if I can, okay, cool. So I got zero and I got one. So obviously we want the, uh, the value, the float value for the blend shape to start at uh, zero, right? Because we want his eyes to be open, hopefully, right, at first. Um, and then we want them to close and then reopen again. So it should be three keyframes here. So if I hold down shift at zero and then again at around one, which is way up here above this number over here, and then back at zero. So it should start out. There we go. Yeah. 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 I think uh, what happened is it's still reading my, um, I need to set all these back to zero so that it uh, shows me my preview properly. Or, you know, it could just be mean and start out closed anyway. Oh, I see, there's another keyframe up there. Sorry, this preview window is very small, so I can't see... I'm also probably, should I be looking up here or down here? I don't know. 
Uh, all right. Um, so I should be able to just delete that, right? Hmm. Make go away. Hmm. Or not. That's fine too. Um. Here we go. I'm just gonna put it down here, right over top of that one. There we go. All right. Cool. So we have a blink animation. And just for just for funsies, I'm gonna add another one. So I'm just gonna hold down shift and left click, and I'm gonna do it again. So we have a couple of links in there. Now he's intelligent. Blah blah blah. blah. Blink blink. He's alive. All right, cool. So that's one method, right? But that's gonna get tedious after a while if you have more than you know one blend shape that you have to animate, right? So the other way of doing it is obviously going to be in Blender, you know, where you have these cool controls that you can just slide back and forth, and they work the way that you want them to. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, because it's not going, we have to export it a little bit differently than we would just a, a regular animation, because we have to export the mesh also because it needs the mesh in order to get the deformations in the vertexes, right? So, I'm just going to show you here really quick. Um, I need to be in pose mode, that's why. So right now I have this talk animation. And then I have... What do we want him to do? Do we want him to blink and be angry? Mm. Blink, blink. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, maybe he's talking and just gets really sad. What do you guys think? Or maybe yeah, he's just like really <laughs> confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. All right, so on this talk animation, I'm going to, I'm basically just going to animate this the same way that I animated uh, this jaw going up and down. I'm just going to move this over, <coughs> not that, this one, and uh, maybe I want him to be a little bit sad here, so I'm going to... I'm going to keyframe that one's location because I'm actually moving its location. And uh, I want it to start out just a tiny bit sad. Or actually, no, I need to make it all the way sad because we won't be able to see it otherwise. And we want to be able to see it so that we can see what's happening. Oh, I'm so sad! <laughs> Life's so hard! <laughs> I'm sorry, Wes. You have to, you have to deal yeah. with me. Um, all right, so let's play that back and see how it looks. <laughs> That's a really quick sadness. I promise I'm better at animation than this. <laughs> Uh, so I just pulled up my dope sheet over here. I just opened up another window. And, uh, I just wanna, let's see, I'm moving it on the x-axis. So I just want this right here. And I wanna make this a little bit longer. Because that was really way too fast. Hi, bye. Hi, um, so I'm just gonna scale this from the cursor a little bit, just to make it a little longer. So that it's not, he doesn't get over it as quickly. I want to be sad. <laughs> we just really want to see, we're, we're so sadistic. Um, okay, so we made that a little longer, let's see how that looks. Eh. Okay, that's, that's a little better, right? Alright, so... I'm going to close this window because that's not a lot of space. Um, and then I'm going to go back into object mode again. I'm switching modes a lot because it, you, you can't 
animate if you're not in pose mode, so you, you're... I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of technical information that I'm throwing at you all at once. Um, no, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. All right, so... I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to export this as a skeletal mesh, even though it is an animation. And you'll see why in a moment. Um, so I'm going to export the FBX. I'm going to come over here. Armature mesh. Okay, cool. And then we're going to, we're going to name this talk sad because he's talking and he's sad. <laughs> um, cool. So now... We go back into Unreal, and we come over here. We're going to import this. There's my Tox ad. Okay. And this time, it comes in as though it's a skeletal mesh, right? But we don't want to import the mesh. So we're going to uncheck that, and then we're going to select our cave dweller from here, and then we're going to import it. And then what we should see is that he gets sad in the middle of talking. And uh, if I come down here over to show and bone all hierarchy, you can see that that's moving. Okay, I'm going to turn that off now because that's distracting. All right. So we have that now. And the last thing is same skeleton retargeting. Oh, no. So, uh, sorry if you mentioned it in the beginning, but what version of a. Uh, <laughs> what version of Blender? Unreal. Unreal? This is a 4.14.3. Okay. Yeah. Pretty close to the current one. Uh, I believe so. It is a current. It's stable. Yeah. Current. All right. Cool. So, hey. Eh, 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 eh. Okay. That's why I'm in the wrong screen again. Sorry, guys. All right. So, now that we have this guy, what's going on? I'm in the wrong screen. Sorry. <laughs> um. No. Open. Let's see, can I save him? Why not? All right, fine, fine. All right, I'm going to open a new. Let's see, retarget example adult. That's what I wanted. So, as the file mentions, it's an adult character. This is a character that I got out of Make Human just really quick, uh, just to show you. So I don't know if you guys have noticed this. But in all of my um, characters, the armature scale is set to 0.1. And the reason for that is if I had it set to 1, so let's see. And if I had this actually set to 1, it would be this size, right? Which is not the size that we want. But the reason I set it to 0.1 at this size is because when we go to import it into Unreal, um, it needs to import a physics asset. And for some reason, the way that Blender writes FBX files, it doesn't quite take into account bone size the way that it should. Um, so what I end up having to do as a workaround is I have to scale up the armature and apply that scale. So in Maya, it's essentially the equivalent of freezing transformations and then scaling it back down to 0.1 so that Unreal thinks that the, the scale at 1 is the actual bone size, and then it creates a physics asset, um, which is usually pretty handy to have in most cases, right? You, you don't want to have to make one yourself unless, you know, you have really specific needs for it. Um, so that is the workaround for that. I just wanted to, to point that out. Um, the, the, the mesh is at 1, you know, that's that's the scale of the mesh, but the, the armature is ten times bigger. It's weird, I know, I don't know why it works that way. It's just how how quirky this system is. But it works for our needs, so we use it. 
Oops, I hit the Windows button. Okay, um, so now, same thing with this guy as with the penguin. I have uh, a couple of different animations for him. I think the one that I wanted to bring in was some pretty fun ones, but um, let's see. Oh, I, I opened up my graph editor. I'm sorry. I thought that was a dope sheet. All right, so we have a T pose for this one, right, as our default. But uh, I wanted to to show you guys the the rumba, uh, maybe give you guys learn you some some moves here. Uh, so this is the animation that we're we're gonna export. But uh, first we got to get the skeletal mesh out, right? So um, we're gonna do that again. I'm sorry, it's repetitive. Um, I'm gonna set this back to T pose temporarily, just so we have it. And uh, I'm gonna export this FBX armature mesh selected objects face. Uncheck those. Okay, and then desktop retarget and example animation adult. We're just gonna call this Ramba. Because actually, wait, no, I need that because this is a skeletal mesh. My bad. So yeah, we definitely want that to be named what that is. So I'm gonna go into Unreal real quick, and then we're gonna import him. Let me close out all of this stuff first so that uh, we don't have so many tabs open. Let's see how much time do I have? Okay. Um, we're gonna bring this guy in. And we're just going to make sure that uh, all of our stuff is in there. See, I un unchecked import animations because he had a lot of animations that time. And I don't want to import them all yet. So I'm going to uncheck that, and then I'm going to import. Okay, cool. So now he's in there. I'm just going to open him up. And uh, we're going to leave him in that tab for right now. Safe. Okay, cool. Excuse me. And then over here, I'm going to go over to Rumba. I'm going to switch it over to Rumba. And he's going to do the Rumba. And that's going to be amazing. And I'm just going to select the armature. Export, FBX, armature. Retarget example. Did I accidentally delete the E? Damn it. Rumba. Alright. And then we're gonna bring that in. And we're gonna point it to this armature, this skeleton. By the way, armature and skeleton are synonymous, just letting you know. Um, that's just blender terms. Same with uh, shape keys and blend shapes and morph targets. It's all the same thing. All right, cool. So now we have him doing the rumba. But now we want to use this animation for another character with the same rig, right? So we're going to save this really quick. And we're going to come in here, and I'm going to open up his counterpart, which is a child, right? Very different body type. Shorter leaner, female. Okay, so we're going to export just her skeletal mesh, no animations, nothing, because she's going to use his animation. So we're going to export that FBX. This is what I do all day. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, and we have retarget example child, right? So we come over here, and we're going to import this. And this time, it's a skeletal mesh, but we're going to point it in the direction of the retarget example adult. And we're not going to import any animations, because there aren't any. And we don't, we don't want any. We don't want none. And we get this error. Now, the reason we got that error is because if you notice here, this animation, this armature name, 
is actually a bone, according to Unreal. Unreal reads the name of the armature as a bone. And it cre the, the way that the FBX is written, it creates a bone and names it after the armature. So let me try and pull up the adult in another tab here, just to show you. Right? His name, his is armature. So we're just going to copy this and we're going to paste it here. So now she should be good to go, right? So we're going to try this again. We're going to export this. It should remember everything so you don't have to watch me go through all of that again. And then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go up to import and I'm going to try this again. This time I'm going to overwrite what I imported. And we're going to do this again. We're going to point it in the direction of that skeleton and we're going to hit import. And this time it should work. Cool. I was about to doubt myself for a second. All right. So now this is where shit gets interesting because you're going to you're going to see why in a minute. Just hold on. Hold your horses. Let me I got to use my screen space. Okay. Can you see? All right. So he's doing the rumba down here. But if I come up here and I go over to scene setup and I select the animation, you're going to see something truly horrifying. <laughs> because she is currently using his exact skeleton right now at his proportions, which is not what we want. Mm. So this is something that uh, my colleague Rainy would love. She loves everything weird and freaky. Um, we're going to open up this skeleton in another tab, and we're going to fix this because this is wrong and we need to fix it. So we're going to come up here. This has changed, by the way. This used to be you could just right click and it would let you uh, set your retargeting options, but now you have to come down here and you have to show the retargeting options first, right? So right now, everything is set to animation, which basically just means everything is animation data and it doesn't take into account the skeleton at all, which we don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to recursively set the retarding to skeleton, right? Because we want the animation to follow the skeleton and you're going to see a change. So now she almost looks normal, right? But there's still a little bit of something missing, right? Her feet are sliding a little bit. It's because we don't have the root motion that we need. So what we need to do is we need to go back and we need to set this to animation and then we're going to set the root. Remember armature is the, the bone that was created after the name of the armature in Blender. We don't care about it. It doesn't really affect anything. What really, care, we, what really matters here is the route that we made in the armature that we rigged, right? So we're going to set this to animation scaled and we're going to set the pelvis to animation scaled. And now you see she's actually taken a step. I don't know if you noticed it, but I'll go ahead and, and and uh, set it back to skeleton really quick so you can kind of yeah. see the difference. It's a little subtle, so. All right, animation scaled. And there you have it. Nice. All right, so that was it for that. And as I said earlier, I have all of this set up in uh, slides for you so you can reference it if you're ever interested. Um, you can also feel free to experiment with all of the different settings and see what they do. This is just the settings that I use. These are the, the settings that I prefer. Um, but you feel free to do what you feel is best. Um, and then for importing as well, I have the skeletal mesh one and then the animations one, just reminding you, so Owl Docent Dance got retargeted to Owl Docent Skeleton. I'm pointing at the screen as though you can see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 
and uh, importing all of that stuff to Unreal. I forgot the other image. <laughs> Whoops, I'm sorry. It's based, you, you saw it in the video. All right. Hey, I have more slides. What are you doing? Did I break it? I might have broken it. Did I break it? Oh, well, like I guess that's the, the end. Last, last slide. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was up late last night, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you guys have any questions or do you want to see anything? I have some other stuff I can show if you guys are interested. Or... Yeah, um, you've got the armature and the mesh, but we're about to see any stuff like this. Blender let you export that to Unreal just as easily? Or... Yeah, so the skin would come in as a static mesh, uh, just like any other uh, mesh that you would import, just without the, the armature and the whole character <laughs> part. So, yeah, the, it basically would export just as any other mesh would. Any questions first? Uh, are there any Blender plugins that you use a lot? Um, so you saw me use uh, Make Human character. I referenced Make Human earlier. These uh, that was the uh, program that I used to create these characters. Uh, I figured uh, it's it's kind of similar to Mixamo, but uh, hmm. it was Mixamo drop support for Unreal too. Did you see that? Really? You can no longer export from Mixamo directly to Unreal. So if you ever need characters that you can practice with, um, I would recommend Make Human just because it's a really fast way to generate a, a quick character. Um, they're not exactly like game friendly meshes, they're really high poly and unoptimized, but uh, it gets the point across. So um, and uh, it's free also, and they have uh, there's tools written so that uh, you can work directly in Blender uh, with the rig. Uh, you can it it there's a ton of controls that uh, it makes for you so that you don't have to. Um, there's even an option where you can import uh, a, a whole set of facial uh, blend shapes. So and it gives you the drivers for them as well, so that you can have something that you can work with. Um, it's also it has a plugin for uh, motion capture retargeting. Um, so if you download some stuff from Mixamo and you want to see what it looks like not on a Mixamo character, you can load it into Blender using the Make Make Human plugin for it, and uh, it'll actually. That's how I got uh, the Roomba in there. That was a Mixamo animation. And uh, I use Make uh, Make Walk. It's called. It's part of Blender tools that you can go on and you can download uh, from Make Human. It's uh, you can go on to uh, Google. It's uh, the website is makehuman.org. Um, as well as let's see other plugins that I would recommend um, for character animation. I can't think of any. Uh, I know there's some out there, like there's a reface one that I thought was really interesting, which basically it's it's kind of like uh, if you're familiar with Mixamo's, um, what was it, Face Plus? Um, it kind of functions similarly to that, but for Blender. So it uses webcam information and then it kind of takes all of that data and it'll put it onto a, a facial rig for you, at least in theory. I haven't played around it with, with it very much, but I know it was like 15 bucks on... Blender market, so uh, it's it's worth giving a shot if you're ever ne in need of a cheap solution to facial animation. Um, those are the first two off the top of my head. I can probably think of some others later, but you said Make Human works with motion capture. Yes, so there's a, a plugin called uh, Make Walk that comes with the Blender Tools package that you can download from MakeHuman.org. And uh, it works specifically with uh, Blender so that uh, if you have a Make Human rig, it'll take a BVH file that you can download from Mixamo or really anywhere. Truebones, I know, has a lot of um, uh, BVHs that you can download either for free or for very little. Um, and you can just load them in and you'll get a Roomba or something of the equivalent. <laughs> Thank you. 
Any other questions? So what was wrong with the armature scaling again? Um, so the proprietariness of the FBX file format is not easy to replicate uh, for the Blender team, from what I understand. So there are some flaws with it, and one of them is that it doesn't really take into account bone size properly. So when you go to import uh, an armature with a mesh into Unreal, it'll read the armature at an incorrect scale, and you'll get an error saying that the bone size is too small, and therefore it will not generate a physics asset for you. Which, in all fairness, you don't always need a physics asset, but it annoyed me, so I found a workaround for it. <laughs> um, so it may or may not prove to be a problem for uh, your particular needs, but um, it's something that uh, I like to have just in case it's ever needed. So. Yeah, Autodesk owns, <coughs> Autodesk owns the rights to the FBX file format, and it's free to use in commercial software and illegal to use in free software. Uh, so they can't uh, use the SDK provided by Autodesk in Blender because it's explicitly not allowed to license. But if you're using commercial software that you're charging people for, it's free to use it. <laughs> so if Blender sold itself, they could use the official Autodesk. But since they're open source and free, there's an explicit you know, clause in there that says you're not allowed to use our SDK with free software. So, so what are they why. doing? Are they trying to like just just uh, like reverse engineer it? Yeah. And, and that's legal though? Of, yeah, you can like white white room it. Uh, and they had a bunch of dudes from Epic <clears throat> with the initial implementation that helped them to build up what they have now. Yeah. Nine or four ten that they contributed a huge amount of code to the FBX exporter, but yeah, they're they're still just straight white room in it, uh, reverse engineering without looking at the SDK, so they have to see what's wrong. But yeah, works pretty well. All right. Well, I guess that's it. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> uh, thanks again, Ariane, for that uh, very detailed, informative presentation. Um, I'm a programmer by trade, and I want to go in there and start playing around with animations because uh, of what you showed us, so thanks for that. Um, and that's uh, for everyone, you know, the our meetup group is inclusive to all things Unreal, so, you know, we're going to cover animations and the animation pipeline, we're going to cover the art pipeline like Greg did last year, we're going to cover even C++ like Justin did last year. Um, and we're always open to suggestions from you guys as to what you want us to cover next. Um, so please go on our meetup page, uh, either send me and Justin a message privately or just post publicly if you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, let us know some of the things you want to, to, to uh, hear about so that we can make it happen. Um, we're always looking for new speakers. Uh, for any topic Unreal related that you want to cover, again, get in contact with us and we'll, we'll uh, make sure we get it scheduled so that we get it set up. Um, and as I said at the beginning of the meetup, we're gonna be looking for more permanent hosting, but again, thanks so much to Time Fire for hosting us tonight. Yeah. I just wanna throw in there too that um, like we pretty much got a lot of broad strokes on, on uh, talks last year. Purposely trying to stay as wide as possible. I don't see anything wrong with this year, like getting down to something super specific. Mm -hmm. And if it's a shorter talk because of that, um, we're open to that too. Like, if you just want to go in and show us one thing that annoys you and like exactly how to, how to tackle it, uh, we're open to stuff like that. Uh, we got a lot of regular people coming back. Yeah. And, you know, the, the new people will still have plenty of opportunities to sprinkle in. And we're, right. We're also open to workshops um, as well. Uh, we just haven't had enough momentum in the last year to warrant the need for them. But if there's like something that people want us to cover in depth, uh, and we're, we're either able to do it ourselves or find someone to do it, uh, we'll schedule time outside of our Wednesday uh, monthly meetups in order to do that. Um, but we just need to know ahead of time uh, what people are interested in. Um, yeah, with that, uh, thanks everyone for coming out. Um, I'm curious though, uh, how many people we have here who are not from Time Fire? Can you raise your hand? Okay. 
So, you, sir. Yes. Where Where are you from, um, and how did you find out about us? I, actually, I was looking for user groups. Okay. Um, I'm a student at DeVry. I spent about 20 years in management and got out of it because I just wanted to go back into computers. Uh, pretty knowledgeable in the technical aspect of it, but not the programming aspect. So okay. that's what I'm doing there. Um, actually, uh, working for a degree in, in uh, game